please sit down. Um, I'm Noel, and this is Senior Sunday. And, <laughs> woo! and we are going to recognize the seniors, and Sam is going to speak for today. Yeah, woo! And that's Aubrey, and she is our youth worship leader. Woo! And if you will, please turn your attention to the screens. Hello, I'm Shakita. And I'm Joe. And welcome to Woodbine Sunday Announcements. Okay, Sam, this is gross. I can't do this. Okay, fine. You don't have to do it. Ugh. All right. Today's announcements are... So, uh, the announcements today are being brought to you by me. Since Sam today is going to be bringing you the, the sermon, he was worried to get a little sick of his face and he thought you might want to change it up. Also, since the kids are leading worship today, he wanted to make sure he didn't forget what I look like. So the announcements are today brought to you by the worship minister. First, we want to make sure that everyone gets signed up for the Global Leadership Summer. Summer. First, we want to make sure everybody gets signed up for the Global Leadership Summit, which is going to be right here at Woodbine on Thursday and Friday, August 8th and 9th. You don't want to miss out. So make sure to go to the Welcome Center and get signed up. Second, everyone here has an opportunity to be part of the great Woodbine production team. So if you would like to be part of the production team, contact Chrissy Lindholm at chrissy at woodbinechurch.org and we can get you set up, get you some training. You'll be mixing sound and doing lights with the best of them. Why did you comment about yourself in third person? Because Chrissy likes to do that, Sam. Weird. Okay, well, whatever, to each her own. All right, next thing is we have BBS coming up. As you all know, BBS is gonna be June 10th through the 14th. We need everyone who's gonna participate to hurry up and get their t-shirts. Go ahead and pay for those. You can do that out at the Welcome Center. There's still a lot of things that are needed for BBS, so please take your time to check that out. As well as if you go out to the atrium today, you will see examples of the mobility carts that we we're raising money for this year with BBS. So we encourage everybody to do that. And now, if you will, please remember, I almost forgot, I want to remind you that if you have any other questions, please check out your super cool bulletin, or you can also head to the Welcome Center to get more information. Uh, check us out on Facebook, and now I'm going to ask you, if you will, please let's stand and continue to worship. Nailed it. Please edit that so it doesn't... All right, let's stand as we continue to worship.
As we're getting ready to spend a little time in prayer, I want to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, well, first, before I go any further, I tell you, I'm so proud of our, uh, the folks who are part of our youth band and uh, that lead in worship every Wednesday night for our kids. And, uh, and then they come in here and lead for us, too. So we appreciate that. Y'all are doing a great job. Thank y'all. Uh, I tell you, it takes a lot of courage to get up in front of a group if you're not used to getting up in front of them. So uh, they, I appreciate that. Uh, there's this little slip of paper. Uh, you can notice at the top 
of the paper. Everybody can fill that out. At the bottom part is a place where you can uh, let us know how we can pray for you. So just put your prayer request in here on the bottom of that paper. Drop it in the offering basket when it comes by in a little bit, and we will be praying for you as we meet together as a staff. So uh, and that's for everybody. If you're a first-time worshiper with us or if you've been with us since we started the church, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. So we would love to pray for you. Let us know how we can pray for you. Uh, we have some uh, requests we need to uh, share with you real quick. Uh, Frank Friedman's in the hospital, was placed in the hospital with pneumonia this week, and he continues to be there. He is improving, but please pray for him uh, and lift up Mr. Frank. Uh, we want to also remember Bev Cooper. Uh, Bev took a fall this past week, going to have to have an uh, uh, orthopedist look at her, so we want to invite you to be praying for Bev and lift her up. Um, we want to invite you to be praying for uh, Jackie Ware and her entire family. Uh, her uh, grandson, Nathan, who had a motorcycle wreck about two weeks ago, passed away. Uh, he is, um, the, we do not have any arrangements uh, for the funeral or anything like that at this time. But remember Jackie and then her daughter, Celeste, and her son-in-law, Bobby, and um, the other grandmother, Tony. So lift up all of them as they're going through this loss uh, in their life. Uh, we invite you to pray for them. Um, in just a moment, we're going to pray for all these requests, but we have a group we're going to pray for specifically. Uh, Sam is going to introduce that group to us. Uh, let's welcome our youth minister, Sam Satulo, up here. So. Hey, everyone. Uh, so... Can you turn the, the spots on for me real quick? Um, if you email me or your parents email me about being recognized, please come to the stage now. You three, Corinne, uh, Matthew. Where you at? Oh, he's in the drum cage. Get out of here. All right. Hello. So this is the part where I awkwardly announce everyone's name, tell them about their accomplishments, uh, maybe crack a few jokes. They're not going to be funny, but... I'll make the jokes anyway. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll start here. Hey, how are you? This is Corinne Greenfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take a, st take a step forward. Everyone take a step forward. We're in the shadows. There we go, perfect. <laughs> All right, Corinne is going to UWF, I can never say that correctly, to study psychology so she can be, yeah, so she can be a criminal psychologist, which is super, super awesome. And as you can see there, she was also the commander of the ROTC at Pace, uh, along with being in choir and ran track and field, I believe the 400, the 200, the 100, the, f the 4x1 or the 4x4? Four four? Both. Okay. <laughs> so anything that requires being fast, she did. <laughs> so this is Corinne. This is Taylor Klein, wearing an orange onesie. I think I know nothing about fashion. She's going to PSC to study business and marketing so she can run her own online boutique after she graduates. Uh, fun fact about Taylor, she's been riding horses for four, possibly five years. She couldn't give me a clear answer on that. Uh, and she's going to continue by, and this is something I didn't know, uh, being on the UWF and PSC equestrian teams. I didn't know that was a thing. And that's super cool. It just started? You're the, created you're, you created it? This year. That's awesome. Excellent. <laughs> Taylor Klein. <laughs> so back to the notes. Hey, everyone. This is Clara Dunlap. <laughs> Perfect. She is going to PSC to get her AA first, and then she's going to UWF to study communications. Uh, she doesn't know what she's doing with that just yet, but hey, me either. <laughs> <laughs> so we're both in the same boat. Uh, she's been coming to youth for a long time, since you were in middle school, right? But you've been actively helping out for about three years, and it's been a fantastic time having you. And I'm just... I'm just really excited for you. Claire Dunlap. This is Abby Hand. Yeah. 
She is going to UW, U, oh my goodness, UWF, UWF, the University of West Florida, to study nursing to be a nurse practitioner. Yeah. Uh, and she, uh, this year in SGA, she was the marketing director. She also played varsity softball and was in NHS and beta, which is just a resume that I didn't have. So congratulations. Abby Hand. This is the one I was most nervous about because he's got a complicated last name like I do. This is Caleb Confucione. Yes, got it. <laughs> Boom. He's going to FSU to study journalism and political science. Yeah. Once again, way over my head. Uh, he's been playing soccer for 15 years. I played high school soccer all throughout high school. Uh, and as you can see in that top left picture, he's been attending Woodbine since he was in preschool. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb Confucione. And last but certainly not least, Matthew Batke. What do you want to do? He's going to PSC to study environmental science. Uh, do you know what you want to do with that? Um, environmental engineer, go to UWF. Well, daggum. Or UF. Environmental engineer to go to UWF or UF. Yeah. A bunch of smart people up here. <laughs> Way above me. He was in marching band, beta, uh, the Interact Club, and if you know Matthew, you know, he is also an Eagle Scout, which, yeah. <laughs> So, now that you clap for him, clap one more time. Matthew Badkey. <laughs> now I have a gift for all of you. As per usual, I have a gift for all the seniors. And as per usual, it comes in a laundry basket because you have to do your own laundry. That's part of graduating. And since you're doing your own laundry now, don't worry, I got you laundry detergent. It doubles as fabric softener, so I got you a deal. <laughs> now, you may be wondering what this is. This is a long reach and pickup stick. It's actually what it's called. And why did I get you this? That's a great question. This is because every year I have a dumb pun. Uh, and I've got two this year about going to college, like last, I think last year I got dinosaurs for everyone because your social life was gonna be extinct or something like that. This year I got you this, long reach and pickup so you can reach for your goals. <laughs> and this butterfly net, for when you get fervous, nervous on the first day of class, you can just catch the butterflies in your stomach. <laughs> I did not expect to laugh at that joke. <laughs> then, since you're adults now, you have to brush your teeth. I got you a toothbrush, but I also got you a second toothbrush because you're inevitably going to lose that first one, so I made sure you got two. Then, as a staple, toast some pop-ups. Off-brand Pop-Tarts because, hey, college is expensive. <laughs> and along with it being expensive, I also got you your first five meals, top ramen. <laughs> and when you don't finish that ramen, I got you some Tupperware as well. <laughs> and as a celebratory drink, I got you some Martinelli's sparkling ap apple cider, which is just the best. There you go. Non-alcoholic for anyone that's worried. It's ap apple cider. But it is sparkling, so that makes it fancy. <laughs> all right, I have one of these for all of you. Uh, if you don't like chicken ramen, I have shrimp. So, <laughs> but the only toast and flavor I have is brown cinnamon, so you're stuck with that. All right, thank you. Uh, after this, please come by my office and pick up your gift. Um, and now, Pastor Jimmy's gonna come back up and we're gonna pray for you all. All right, let's give them all a hand. So uh, first, I want to offer my congratulations to you. That's great. Uh, it looks like y'all are uh, headed for some more great and uh, 
powerful things to do with your life, and we appreciate what you've done as being a part of the Woodbine family. And uh, we want to pray for the parents and uh, uh, everybody as they're getting ready to enter into a different kind of relationship with a graduated senior. So uh, what I'd like to invite you all to do is if you'd gather around one of these uh, um, altars and kneel down, uh, we're going to invite your parents to come down. Anybody else who would like to come and lay hands on you, we're going to pray for you all, okay? Can we do that? Now come on down. This is very, very painless, I promise. The wings. I'm just going to stand in the middle since we've got people going both sides, okay? So, uh, and anybody else who'd like to come down and lay hands on them, you're welcome to do that. It's not just for the parents, because you can maybe lay hands on the parents, because they're going to need prayer too. Uh, all right. It's always a great day on Senior Sunday when we get a chance to celebrate their lives and what they accomplish and where they're going. Will you pray with me? Well, Lord, here we are. We've come back on this Sunday to be a part of this worship. We've come with... Uh, many requests, Father. We have our prayer request sheet we have each week. We also have those that we've added. Those families that are hurting right now, like Nathan's family. Those who are sick that we've added to the list and those who are in need. We just lift all of those prayers up to you, Father. We're so thankful that we have the opportunity to pray for them and we pray for your comfort and peace and strength to be upon them, Father. Right now, Father, we also pray for these seniors. These who are here with us today and we're able to pray for and lift up. And then those who are graduating with them. And as these seniors are headed out into uh, a new uh, experience of life, Father, uh, as they're getting ready to go and, and tackle big things, Father, and even bigger things than they tackled in, in high school. As they're getting ready to go to college, as they're getting ready to prepare for the future that is in store for them. I pray for your hand of protection to be upon these young people. I pray for them, fathers, are getting ready to go out into this world in a new relationship with this world as college students. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with them as they are headed onto these campuses. I pray that you would help them, Father, to maintain their faith and grow their faith. I pray that you would help them to be a witness to those they come in contact with. I pray, Father, that just as you have touched their hearts, you would help them to carry that message of love and grace and mercy to the rest of the world and into this college setting, Father. I pray that you would be with them as they are getting ready to uh, in encounter new friends and experience new experiences. I pray that you would help them to grow in their faith and be an influence for you in this world that they're in. I pray for them as they're getting ready to get out of college in a few years and head out into uh, their chosen profession. I pray that you would, Lord, be with them. I pray that you would guide them to the calling you have for their life. And I pray, Lord, for your strength in their lives. I pray again for your protection as they are going to face a lot of challenges. I pray for their parents as they're entering into a different kind of relationship with a graduated senior. I pray that you would be with them and that you would help them in this uh, new relationship, Father. I pray that you'd grant them wisdom as they're teaching them, continuing to parent them, and as they're growing together. I just pray that you would bless these families. I pray that you would bless these seniors. And Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the privilege of praying for them and all these others as we lift them up to you in your precious and holy name. Amen. So, one more time, let's congratulate our seniors. You know, you have, those of you who have given... Uh, 
to the life and ministry of the church with your financial resources. You have helped to fund the ministry we're celebrating today, our youth ministry and our reach to our youth. And we want to thank you so much for those who have given and continue to support this ministry and all the ministries of the church. So thank you for helping with that. And uh, we, uh, at this time, I want to invite you to pray with me one more time. Will you pray with me? Father, I pray that you would, uh, we would always remember that you are the first and the greatest giver. Everything we have comes from you. And now we have an opportunity to give back to you through the giving of your tithes and our offerings. We pray that you would take them and use them for your glory, for the building of your kingdom, and for the winning of, the, of people to Christ. And we'll rem we will remember to give you praise. In your name we pray. Amen. This time we invite our ushers to come forward as we continue in worship.
All right, I appreciate so much, again, what they do to lead us in worship today. Um, you know, I am very thankful for my entire staff. I have a ball working with them. They are a blessing to me in so many ways. Uh, the one who makes me the laugh the most is Sam, though. Uh, so, Sam, come on up here. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I love his sense of humor, and uh, I love how he uh, reaches out to the youth and uh, what he does to, uh, to work in, with them. And what y'all don't see behind the scenes is all of the youth that hang out in his office all the time. Uh, no matter when I go by there uh, during, um, you know, on a Sunday or during the week, I mean, it seems like there's always some youth some, there sometime. And uh, so that, that speaks very highly for what Sam does and how much uh, he does for, with them and how much they care for him. Uh, so what I want to do before he speaks is I wanted to take a moment and pray for him. So will you join me in prayer? Father, I want to thank you so much for Sam. I appreciate what he does for the youth and how much he cares for them. I appreciate all the other stuff he does outside of just the youth ministry where he uh, helps to serve in, in this church and in this community. Right now, I pray for your anointing to be upon him. I pray for your blessing to be upon him, Father. And I pray that you would speak through him to us today because we need to hear from you today. Father, and I just pray that you would use Sam as that instrument. I pray that you would take complete editorial privilege in everything he says. Father, let what comes from him come first from you to us, Father. So I just pray for your blessings on him, and I want to give you thanks for the ministry Sam does to these youth, and I pray for your blessings uh, as he continues to minister to them in a, in a very powerful way. So I lift him up to you, Father, and we look forward to what you're going to say through your servant Sam today. In your name we pray. Amen. Bless you. All right. So for those of you who hadn't heard me speak before or have seen me speak before, I like to uh, walk. Meaning I'll be over here in one second and over here in a second. Uh, and I'm really glad you're here today because I'll let you in on a little slang term uh, for the kids. I think I got a real banger for you today. It's a good thing. Um, it's something that... I had planned for, this is an upcoming series that we're doing in July. The series we're doing right now in youth is called Now, Taking Control of Your Life and uh, Seizing the Moment Now, followed by What in July. And What covers a lot of things. And this is a rare moment because typically with these, and by typically I mean the past three times I've done this, I have reused... I've polished up a lesson that I've given in youth and changed it around a little bit to give it in here. But this time, you get a sneak preview of what I'm going to talk about because no one's heard this one before. So, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so, every year for the past 15 years or so, uh, Woodbine has taken the youth to revive. That's a camp up in Andalusia, and technically it's actually only been 10 years because Revive is the rebranded camp, Camp Alpha, that we went to before Revive that started in 2009. It doesn't matter. We've been going to Blue Lake for about 15 years to a camp called Revive. And last year I had the opportunity to go up to Tennessee and help out with the Revive branch there. They've got two camps. They've got the Gulf Coast Revive, and they've got the Tennessee Revive, uh, lovingly known as Nash Tucky. I don't know why. <laughs> it's in Tennessee. Uh, so I got, a, I got the opportunity to go up there, and it really blew my mind at how different the experience was. It was incredibly stressful and also rewarding to be a part of it. And there's no way I could accurately describe just how different they were, but I can give you a pretty good picture. At Gulf Coast, everyone is, is there for the most part because they've heard how wonderful and awesome an experience they is, and what it is, and they come to see God work. And it's super cool. Uh, and that's the appropriate attitude to come to Revive with because that's what's going to happen. And it's wonderful, and uh, people's lives change there forever. At Tennessee, however, most go 
because it's better than being at home. And not like, oh, my parents are being kind of mean to me, or they, they wouldn't let me go out past 10 o'clock, and they're, they're just, they don't, they don't understand my life. Not that kind of, they didn't want to be at home, but more of being at camp meant there was less of a chance that they'd see somebody get shot in front of them. Less of a chance that they'd get mugged on their way home from school. They'd have an actual bed to sleep in that night. So the two camps are very, very different. They didn't necessarily want to be there, but it was an escape from their normal life. And I can tell you they didn't necessarily want to be there because I watched people fall asleep on the floor during main session. And what main session is, it'd be like this. It'd be like you just being like, thanks but no thanks and falling asleep right now. I appreciate you not doing that. Thank you. I'm going to try to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, I would have to chase kids down that just ran from the buildings. They were like, I'm gone. And they would run into the woods in Tennessee and they're like, well, can't just leave them there. Somebody's going to go find them. So we'd chase them down. They would make demands of the staff, like, you need to give me your car right now so I can go home. And they would yell and tear each other down and get into fights and brawls and all this stuff, and it was crazy. And it wasn't all of them that were like that. Some of them were refugees from all over Africa. And my friend Austin Hardcastle was telling me about one of the, one of the kids that usually goes to camp but couldn't that year because he had to have surgery on his eye or he was going to go blind. He was telling me that this, this boy lived in a village in... And apparently he didn't tell me the village. He says he lived over in a village in Africa. And the villagers believed that he had had a curse put on him. And this curse was uh, killing all the crops in their village and it was bringing bad fortune to them. So they wanted to kill this boy. They wanted to sacrifice him. And his, pa- his family kept him hidden in their house until one day these, these villagers came to their home and said, give us the boy or we're going to kill all of you too. So his parents went to the back room, they found him, and they opened up a window and said, run, just go. And he ran from his village as people were shooting at him. He jumped fences and ran through woods and dove into ditches until he could finally get far enough away where he found a, a distant ant, and they were able to, uh, to make it over to America as refugees. And that's crazy, but I think the crazier part of this story is how Austin told me that this guy holds no ill will towards his family or the people trying to kill him. He said that he asked God every day to move in their lives and save them, which blew my mind. I don't know that I could do that, to be forced out of my home by my family and have to run for my life and to not hold a grudge for that. It's crazy, and I tell you these two things because something happened by the end of the week. Revive is a week-long camp, no matter which one you go to. On the last night, we got to see two different worlds and cultures meld together in one perfect picture of people worshiping God despite what their stories were. The people that had fallen asleep and run away on Tuesday were praying over and worshiping with those refugees that had to flee for their lives. And it was amazing. And the only way we were able to see that as staffers at Revive was because we kept digging into their lives and trying to figure out why they were there. And I know that may sound redundant because I just told you that some were there because it was better than being at home and others were there because they loved God. But that's service level. That was what's on the surface. We needed to look deeper at why they were there. And that's the question I want to pose to all of us here now. Is why are we here? 
And the answer to some of us may just because, maybe just because, that's what we're supposed to do on a Sunday. We just have it at this point, and then we do it. Maybe the answer is you've always done it. You grew up in a family that went to church every Sunday, and that's what you're doing with your family now. And if I asked the same question in youth, the answer they would give me, and maybe the answer for some of you, would be to learn more about God. Sometimes it's what they genuinely think. Most times it's because they think that's what I want to hear. And that's your answer. That's fine. What I want to hear is, why are you here really? Because I believe there's a more profound answer in all of us. And I believe that because I've seen it and I've felt it before. I've seen it when people click from going through, just through going through the motions to understanding their purpose for being here. And I'm talking about here on earth. We'll get to that introspective deepness in a second. But I'm talking about here right now in this room. And I know that you know there's a deeper answer as well. But I think we're all just too afraid to say it. So we stay surface level and present face value. We don't want to admit that we're broken or flawed. We don't want to admit that we're hurting. We don't want to admit that we're angry. We don't want to admit that we're looking for answers to fill that gap. But allow me to let you in on a little bit of knowledge that I've gathered over my 24 years of life. For those of you who didn't know, I'm 24. I know the hairline doesn't say that, but God doesn't want surface level. God wants all of you all the way through because he loves you. And here's what Jesus has to say about giving surface level to him. In Matthew 15, 8, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. God wants all of you, not just a little. So why are you here? I believe the answer really does start with to learn more about God. I think that's the, the, the perfect starting answer. Because that can follow up with, I'm going to here to learn more about God so I can figure out why I'm hurting. Why did God let this happen? I'm here to learn more about God because I'm angry and I want to know why he didn't do something about it. But it's more than that too. And I believe that it's to learn about ourselves. Consciously or subconsciously, in Genesis 1.27, says God created human beings. He created them to be God-like, reflecting God's nature. And there's a void in all of us that we try to fill with hobbies and activities and vices and television and movies and stuff and whatever. But you and I both know that that's not going to fill that void. Because this hole was created when we were separated from God and his paradise after Adam and Eve ate that fruit. And it severed our connection. And it put a hole in our hearts. So we come to church, we read the Bible, we learn about Jesus because it shows us the missing piece of God's creation in us. The part that we willingly threw away. And as we learn more and more about God, we learn more and more about ourselves. We discover our purpose. What is our purpose? Very simple. To love like Christ loved. To go and make disciples of all nations. We, are to ref we were made to reflect God's nature. And that's to love like Christ loved. Allow me to tell you something, if you will, if you haven't already. 
if the picture and the image you have of God or the church is God just sitting on a, on a throne waiting to smite you, it's wrong. It's an incorrect picture. God's waiting to hold you in his arms and to tell you how much he loves you and how amazing you are and wonderful and beautiful and smart and talented and brave and courageous. And he's so excited to tell you how long he's been waiting to drown you in love. That's the accurate picture of God. He's not waiting to condemn you. He's waiting for a chance to woo you. No matter what, you, what you're going through or what you've been through, God wants you. And it's so easy to get caught up in the rules and regulations of the world and of our faith that we forget that God isn't waiting with a pen and a pad watching and writing down every time you screw up. Will there be a day of judgment? Yeah. <laughs> That's no fun. But yeah. There will be, but right now, God is more concerned with what you're doing to build his kingdom and share his love. Can I do a little interacting with you real quick? I'm going to take your silence as a yes. <laughs> look around. I actually look at all the empty chairs. This room is built for 400 I think 400, it's about half full. I'm an optimist. How many people did you invite here this week? As we've discussed, or as I've told you, we're all trying to fill a void in our life with something. So how many people have you told, hey, I know the answer? I know what's going to fill that hole in your heart. Let me share it with you. Natalie, will you turn these lights off behind me? And will you turn these screens off as well? Thank you. Forget this. This is cool. This is great. Natalie, turn the chase on. This is cool. But who cares about it? That's part of why you should invite people here, because it's cool. But it doesn't matter. Forget the room, forget the building for a second. How many people have you talked to about your faith this month, two months ago, a year ago? Even in passing, it doesn't have to be a long conversation. And I know you can sit there and think to yourself, oh, well, it's very easy for Sam and Pastor Jimmy to sit there and look down their noses at me for not talking about God. It's their job, too. To which my rebuttal is it's your job as well. Matthew 28, 19. Go and make disciples of all nations. Yeah, we get paid for it, but... That doesn't matter when we die. <laughs> what matters is how many lives we touched for Christ. This is literally our purpose in life. Minister is not a special title reserved for me and the people that work here. Look, get, your, get your bulletins out. We're doing more interactivity. Can I borrow that real quick? Absolutely, sir. Thank you. Oh, dang it. Oh, never mind. There we go. It's down to the very bottom. I was really worried that this analogy wasn't going to work because I thought we took it off. Very bottom of the back. Well, that stinks. <laughs> what it used to say <laughs> was that we're all ministers here. Is it, is it on there still? Perfect. It's on the wall. It's outside. It's everywhere. <laughs> hey, you can find it. <laughs> I 
I can't, but you can. <laughs> Point being, it's literally our purpose in life. We're all ministers, whether officially or unofficially. You're a minister too, so what are you doing about it? We all have a mission. We were created to be godlike, reflecting God's nature. God's nature is an uncontrollable wildfire. It's reckless, just like the song we just sang, which means that's our nature too, or supposed to be. It's our purpose to reflect the attributes of God because he put them in us, which means that the love of Christ if the love of Christ really is in us, then we shouldn't have to try to remember or search our memory for the last time we talked to somebody about him and how you're fixing that void in your soul. And I want all of us to fulfill our purpose. Not only because this place is cool, Natalie turned the chase back on, not only because this is cool, And it's, I like working here, and I like being goofy. And if we had to close these doors, I'd be devastated. But not because of that, but because what Christ, it's because it's what Christ wants us to do, to tell people about him. You can turn them off now. This is a great job. I love hanging out with your kids. They're great people. But if this job went away, what I would be more devastated about is that I would worry that we wouldn't be able to tell more people about God. If this church was closed, how many of you would continue to go to church somewhere? How many of you would continue to learn about God? How many of you would continue to tell people about God? That's what Christ wants us to do. The building is comfortable and nice. But more importantly, God wants you to shout his name from a rooftop or more quietly conversate about him around a water cooler or talk to him or talk about him in your study groups when you're in college. So, I'll end with this question. Will we go and fulfill our purpose, or will this just be another Sunday where we listen for about 30 minutes and then set it aside because it's kind of inconvenient for us? I hope and pray that it's the former for all of us. Will you pray with me? Father God, thank you so much for letting us come together. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the seniors that are graduating and this accomplishment of theirs, God. And I pray that we can all feel that wildfire love in our hearts, that we can go out and unashamedly and loudly proclaim your name, God, because it's what you ask us to do. Because you ask us to reflect your nature. You created us to reflect your nature, God. So I pray that we don't set this aside. And that we actually go out and we reflect you, God. For no other reason than it's what you want of us. To go and spread your name and share love with people because you created us to love. And we love you and we thank you so much. Amen.
Thank you again for leading us in worship today, and uh, Sam, thank you for that uh, powerful message and that challenge that you've issued for us today, that the Lord spoke through you, so thank you very much for, for that and for being obedient, uh, and seniors, we wish you the very, very best. Remember, we are here for you uh, after you graduate. Uh, any way that we can help you and your families out, we want you to know that we are here for you and your families. Uh, let us know how we can pray for you, and let us know how we can continue to serve you. Sam's told us why we're here. Now we get to go out and tell others why Christ came for them. We get to share with them the love and mercy and grace of God. So I invite you to do that. If you're a first-time worshiper here, or if you've been here before and I hadn't met you, I would love the opportunity to visit with you. Uh, I'll be in the library. If you exit these doors, hang left, come down here. I'd love the opportunity to visit with you a little bit if you've got a few minutes. But please take a few minutes to congratulate these seniors and, uh, uh, and tell them how proud you are of them. Will you pray with me? God, you are so good. You are wonderful, you are powerful, and you are mighty. And we thank you that we have the opportunity to tell others about your love and mercy and grace. Lord, I pray that we would take this challenge serious. As we leave here, help us to go and tell others about you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.